and welcome. Glad you could join us for this edition of Tech 24. I'm Julia Seeger. Imagine being able to receive data 400 times faster and perform computations at an even greater speed. It's now a reality thanks to light shaping technologies developed by two French startups. And in Test 24, Dan and Jay Cattlecar is about to live a childhood dream by becoming a professional DJ for a moment. And as you'll see in his demonstration, he'll get ever closer to touching sound. After reaching a record high in December, the virtual currency Bitcoin is now making headlines because of its fluctuating value. Its popularity, however, continues to grow, especially in Africa. According to a recent report published by Citibank, Nigeria and Kenya are now ranking as the fourth and fifth highest Bitcoin holder per capita in the world. But as Kenya watches the currency grow, its central bank is ramping up warnings. Our reporters Bastien Renouille and Caroline Thompson have this report. In this working class Nairobi neighborhood, Eugene is cleaning his brand new motorbike. It's been eight months since he began investing in virtual money. It gave me like very good returns in the money actually I'd invested. And I was like, why not? Uh, this is the bike I've always wanted. Thanks to Bitcoin, he now earns about 650 euros monthly, much more than the 98 euros the average Kenyan earns. It's success that has stunned his wife. The moment you told me about uh, cryptocurrency, at first I didn't understand what it was. Eugene was regularly watches the currency uh -huh. rate. So I look, I see the prices from here. In a corner of their salon, he uses a computer he made to generate bitcoins. The lower part is pretty much cheaper, but what is expensive is actually the graphic cards itself. Each one of these graphic cards is actually $800. Such a big investment doesn't discourage young Kenyans. In this center dedicated to entrepreneurs, there are more and more investors getting involved with virtual money. Michael was one of the first to use bitcoin in Kenya. He says high unemployment is making these young people increasingly willing to take on the risk. Young people are being driven by a desire to find opportunities. And if they see something like cryptocurrency and they can see, hey, there's demand for cryptocurrency here and they can get it, why can I not do this? So there's no reason for them to not to do it. It's an infatuation that worries the Kenyan government. The country's central bank has recently ramped up its warnings. Clients of this trading group are asking more and more questions about virtual money, but like the central bank, its head doesn't recommend Bitcoin. It might go up next week, it might go down next week, but at the end of the day, it's going to be worth near zero. So p investors who've come into Bitcoin now are going to suffer huge losses. Citibank's last report says Kenya is holding more than 1.3 billion euros in bitcoins. If that currency collapses, the country could lose up to 2.3 percent of its gross domestic product. And let's now welcome Dan and Jay Cattlecar on set, who's going to tell us more about his latest report. Thank you for joining us. But first, two startups in France are using light to change the way data is transferred and crunched. One of them recently helped set a world record of 10 petabytes per second, while the other can improve the speed of machine learning calculations by 500 times. Let's take a look. A glimpse of the future of data transfer can be found in this small building in the French city of Rennes. Jean-Francois Morizur and his team at K-Labs have developed a new technology. They can now send information through local area networks as much as 400 times faster than before. They're able to reshape in a very, very flexible way the light. And this allows you to get two things. First off, inside the fiber, the light propagates in a very controlled way because you shaped it. And the second thing is you have multiple channels because you have multiple inputs and each of them carry, can carry a full stream of information. So if you have 10 inputs, you have a factor of 10 in the capacity of the fiber. K-Labs was the result of a 2010 research project on quantum optics at the Kastler Brussel Laboratory, part of Paris's Sorbonne University. So we were developing apparatus which have very, very good sensitivity to make good measurements. And we find that this, this apparatus, which is an imaging apparatus, has application for telecommunications. And we had contact finally with uh, Alcatel Lucent, which is a French telecom company. And they told us, yeah, this is a very interesting apparatus for us, which would help us in improving telecommunications. Besides carrying information, a light can also be used for computing. 
a property that's been explored by another French startup, Lighton. They've developed a light based processor. So the whole thing is getting the zeros and ones that you have in the electronics to be converted back into light uh, through the use of a laser and uh, a chip that uh, has between two and four million uh, small mirrors. Once it has gotten out of this, it gets to be picked up by a camera from one to 150 million pixels, and that is converted back into the zeros and ones of interest to uh, the average machine learning person or data scientist. The ability of this optics-based computing system to crunch big data faster and by consuming less power makes it ideal for machine learning applications. And we're going to dig a little bit deeper into this fascinating topic with you, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Tell us more about the other applications of this so-called multiplane light conversion. Well, establishments like hospitals, libraries, factories, administrative buildings, whichever establishment uh, uses local networks that have multimode fibers, this particular device uh, developed by K-Labs, that comes into play. So, for example, if you want to upgrade your existing capacity, normally what you will think of doing is to replace it with another cable. Now, that can be quite expensive, and it, it may not be easy, especially in places like hospitals. But with this uh, light shaping technology, you are able to upgrade it to as much as uh, 400 times. In fact, in one case, one of their partners reached this astonishing speed of 145,000 times. Uh, what it used to be. Right. So that's where the limit right now is and who it's, knows. It's maybe very it... difficult to grasp how fast that is. Absolutely. So that's where uh, the, the, the uh, K-Lab components, they come into play. And because of its ability to control the propagation of light, it is able to achieve these speeds. And as you mentioned earlier, the astonishing speed of 10 petabyte per second, which was achieved by the Japanese telecom operator KDDI, they used one of K-Lab's components and they achieved this speed over a cable of 9.7 kilometers. And now this new ability to crunch this, these huge amounts of data in no time, of course, will have an impact on autonomous cars. That's right. Autonomous cars is an area where large amount of uh, data is generated. Not only autonomous cars, but also genomics is another area where the Lighton uh, processors can be used. Uh, as you know, Lighton processors, they are able to compute 500 times faster than their silicon equivalent. And not only that, but they also use five times less power. Now that is very important in even modern data centers because as you know, uh, all the major internet companies, they uh, process data using these massive data centers where power, the use of power comes into play or it becomes an acute point. And that's where uh, the light on devices could be of great help. Uh, in the future, of course, they are planning to miniaturize uh, the devices as much as possible so they can stack it up in small space. As of now, they are thinking or they have already implemented a cloud uh, service in which uh, the light-based processor, it uh, forms a hybrid with silicon processor. So it's a co-processing technology because there are certain, uh, certain functions that silicon processors do well, but when it comes to large data, the light on processor will take over. But in the future, who knows, maybe it will shrink to such an extent that uh, we can also, it can be used for uh, normal computers, so we can have supercomputers on our desks. Right, so it's uh, more efficient, faster, and uh, more environmentally friendly. Thank you so much, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. We're going to move on now to Test 24. It's all about the French touch in our test this week as we introduce you to a one-of-a-kind wooden control box to make electronic music. It's called Touché, touched in French, and as the name suggests, it enables you to caress sound. Let's take a listen. Dan, this sound is really nuanced, and it was made possible because it was made out of wood. Well, first, a disclaimer. I have never played any musical instrument in my life, so whatever sound I'm going to create is... So I can't call you DJ Dan, then? Well, that's my nickname, because my name is so complicated. They call me DJ, but I don't live up to that name. Anyway, so this uh, particular device was created by the French company Expressé V, which is based in Montreuil, just uh, next to Paris. Now, the idea is to create a bridge between a synthesizer and acoustic instruments. So what they do, normally you can create uh, 
So if you, I don't know if you have played a synthesizer, but that's what I've been told that on a synthesizer, you can play it like a normal piano, but you can also have these sound effects with, a, with every pitch. But it's a bit cumbersome, you know, you're playing with one hand and your other hand is... Right. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it can be a bit uh, difficult. But with this, it's very intuitive because with one hand you play the tunes, right. and with the other hand you can just change the, like for example here. And you can also create sound on... So you don't need a synthesizer, but if you are good at synthesizer, you can start playing the tunes in synthesizer and mix these sounds. And it's very intuitive because of the technology involved. So basically they use optical sensors which are, which are very uh, quick to react. So the, there are two modes of functioning. One is the up and down mode, and second is the lateral mode. So right. you can move the, uh, they, they call this the wooden skin because it's so intuitive and you can play around with it and create different sounds. So this uh, uh, this uh, signal which is created because of the sensor is then sent out to the software which has been uh, created by the company and that's how you hear these fantastic sounds. Uh, maybe do you want to give it a try? It's quite fun. Let's see. You just have to have the intuition of music which I unfortunately I don't. It is very sensitive. Absolutely, and that's that's the whole point to make it more expressive and to make it easier to to you know mix sounds uh, from the, either from the synthesizer or from uh, the preloaded sounds on the software. DJ Dan, thank you so much for that. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's edition, but we're going to leave you with this incredible sound made possible by the Touche Control Box. Thanks for watching, and do stay with us. More editions coming up.